as an instructor, I often find it interesting that students tell me, I don't know how to do research. I don't know how to do research. You do. Um, you've done it before. And so here I'm going to walk you through an example of research and a research paper outline to help you see that you've already got all these skills, you've been using them for a long time, and if you organize yourself, you can make this whole process much simpler for you. So a research paper is not just about writing the paper, it's about doing the research and writing the paper out of what you did. So my example here is going to be the perfect hard-boiled egg, and this is a research paper by me. So. For my perfect hard-boiled egg, I'm going to use a couple of uh, tools to make this process easier and get myself going. So the first is my document. I'm gonna lay out my research paper and I've got my title page and I'm gonna leave a placeholder here for an abstract because sometimes professors want abstracts, sometimes they don't. Leave a placeholder so you don't forget. You can always delete it later. Notice that I've highlighted my hidden characters here to help with formatting my research paper. And this is all done in APA style or a basic version of APA style. I'll scroll down to the beginning of my paper. And here I have the introduction session section. This is where everybody gets stuck because you try and write this first. Do not write this part first. Save it for later. Put your thoughts down. You've done some background reading or you should have done some background reading to get to the point to say I've got a viable research topic. So my background reading tells me a couple things. One is that eggs are nutritious. I'll need to get citations to support all of this. And oh, by the way, the dietary guidelines are changing all the time about eggs, but I need to make sure that I pull together from my background reading some information to defend my choice about the egg recipes and in particular to set the stage for how this information could be used. So I start out pointing out eggs are nutritious, then I can talk about eggs being versatile. So in the West, they're typically a breakfast food, but we can have them for lunch and dinner. They can be prepared a variety of ways. You can chop them up and throw them on a salad. But hard boiled eggs, also known as hard cooked eggs, are cooked in the shell in the water. And they're a bit of a mystery because you don't know if the cooking worked until you crack the egg open. So that's what makes a hard boiled eggs kind of fun. They can be runny if they're undercooked. So you crack it open, it smashes all over the plate or the counter, or you peel them and you cut them open and find out that the yolks are really a displeasing greenish color, grayish color if the eggs are overcooked. So my theory, I'm working on a theory here, is that there are ideal characteristics of hard boiled, hard cooked egg recipes that could produce the absolutely perfectly cooked hard boiled eggs every time and the hard boiled eggs that have a hard consistency and are not discolored. So they're not runny, they're not yucky looking. So that's my introduction and I've got that in my head. I've done enough reading and I have to know something here. I have to know that there's no one perfect recipe someplace I have to know in my mind that there are different approaches to this and so I'm going to find some slightly different recipes that will allow me to do a synthesized analysis of hard-boiled egg recipes. So my methods, this is where you want to start your research paper. I am going to do or I have done a systematic review of recipes that are commercially available from authoritative sources. So I'm going to get rid of that semicolon there just put in a period and first I want to look at cookbooks by commercial publishers so this is something you could go into a bookstore and buy and recipes by commercial cooking entities or let's call them commercial cooking websites uh, um, that are available free online because we're looking at recipes so one of the things that I know because I like to read through cookbooks is that recipes have two sections one section is ingredients and the other section is the process or the instructions. So I want to keep that in mind. This is what I'm looking for, specifically focused on hard boiled eggs. And now I've got my inclusion criteria published in the English language. And the recipe is for an egg boiled in the water in its shell that is cooked to a hard consistency. That's important because I can find a lot of other different types of recipes that I want to exclude from my analysis. I'm also going to have my specific exclusion criteria. I'm going to exclude church and society cookbooks. I seem to have a, quite a few of those. Loose recipe cards, blogs. I'm gonna just not even say first person accounts because everybody has an opinion about hard boiled eggs. 
published in a language other than English. Um, recipes that focus specifically on improving peelability of the shells. There's actually a whole bunch of recipes that really aim just to make sure you get the cooked eggs fine, but let's make sure that they're peelable. You want to exclude those. Recipes for other ways of cooking eggs, including soft cooks, cooked, and any recipe with the egg broken out of the shell. So anybody who cracks an egg into boiling water, we call that poached eggs, but sometimes people call those hard cooked. And then online recipe sites that require a password or paid subscription to access, I'm just going to take those off the table because I don't want to spend any money. As students, you shouldn't be really spending money to buy resources. You should be using what you can get your hands on. And so for books, how did I, what did I do here? Well, for the cookbooks, I looked in the index for hard boiled egg recipes and hard cooked recipes. So whatever term was used. And if I didn't find it in the index, then I went back to the table of contents and I looked at the relevant chapter that had egg recipes and then I looked manually through that chapter. So again, there are notes here that I can flesh out when I actually get to writing, but for now that discloses what I did. For websites, the search feature was used for hard boiled egg or hard cooked egg. And I targeted some specific websites because their authoritative cooking voices, at least as, as near as I can figure. So you'll see those in a moment. When I found the recipe, I took information about the ingredients and, and the instructions or the process, and I extracted this information into a database so that I could analyze it. So I made myself a little database, and this is the most important part of research. Take notes take notes, take notes. You can't really let your eyes gloss over a lot of different source materials and try to organize it in your head. That's when research gets overwhelming. So if we flip over to my spreadsheet, I like to take notes in spreadsheets because I can reorganize them. So I've got right now seven resources. And at this point in my research, I'm going to stop and look at what I have to see if I need to continue going. So this would be in health science research, health services research, this would be a point where you've enrolled a bunch of subjects, you do a quick analysis of your data, and you try to figure out if you have enough power and you have a good enough effect size so you can stop your research or if you need to continue to enroll subjects. So I'm treating my sources here sort of like mini subjects. So I have seven sources, I've got four cookbooks, and three websites. So here's my source. This is just shorthand for me. And for each of the recipes, I created categories based upon what I looked at, but also what I knew ahead of time. The first category of information is how much water do we need to boil an egg? And one of the things that I wanted to think about was, do we need more water for more eggs, less water for less eggs? And what was kind of interesting when I looked at the recipes, pretty much everybody said cover, 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 cover the eggs cover plus a half an inch, one specific recipe said two thirds of a saucepan, whatever size saucepan, saucepan. Then we look at whether you add oil or salt or anything else to the water, to the recipe. And despite what I heard from people about adding this, none of the recipes really added oil or salt. I thought that was really interesting. So I didn't have oil, I didn't have salt. Uh, the next category of information is what's the temperature of the egg? when we start out here. Is the initial temperature of the egg cold right out of the fridge or is it right out of the hen house slightly warm or room temperature? So many of the recipes did not specify. One recipe, and that was right here at the Joy of Cooking, and I probably can just make a little yellow note for myself over here. Um, if the eggs came just out of the refrigerator, you're gonna add two minutes to the recommended 15 minutes of cooking time. So most people don't store eggs at room temperature, but that's an important note, and they were very specific about this. Um, so boiling time, or an immersion, initial temperature for immersion in water. So this also is kind of interesting, because when I first learned how to cook, I think I learned how to cook eggs by boiling the water and then putting the eggs in. And I expected to find some recipes that did that, and so far I haven't. Why not? Well, because the eggs can crack and that makes it messy. So all of the recipes started when you put the egg in the water, the water was cold. So they didn't even say run warm water over the eggs. You start out with cold water, all the recipes. Then I looked at the actual cooking time, the time that you, once the water came to a boil, 
what do you do with the egg? So we start out with cold water across the board, then we bring the water to a boil, and then what happens? So what we have here is kind of interesting. Boiling time for Better Homes and Gardens, they say 15 to 20 minutes. That's quite a range based upon everything else that we're seeing here. Uh, boiling time and the joy of cooking, 17 minutes. But for both of these recipes, we're reducing the heat to medium. So we bring it to a boil, turn down the heat, continue to boil or continue to have the egg over the heat for 15 to 17 to 20 minutes. Now chow hound, boiling time nothing because you bring the cold water to a boil, then you turn it off and you let the egg sit for 13 minutes in the hot water. So Martha Stewart, once it comes to boiling, boil for 12 minutes. Cook's Illustrated, also you're going to turn it off, but you're going to let it sit for 10 minutes. Epicurious, boil, bring to a boil, reduce to medium for 10 minutes, and then how to cook everything vegetarian, turn the heat off and let the egg sit for 9 minutes. So right here, I've got something very interesting. We all start out with cold water, but now I've got some differences in the boiling time, or not boiling, and cooking time after the egg comes to a boil. And this is enough of a range that tells me something. I'm going to need a few more recipes because I'm not really able to come to a conclusion. My brain would tell me if I turned off the heat, I would think you'd want to keep the egg in the water for longer, but that doesn't seem to be true. It seems that if you're still boiling, you're still boiling for longer. So that's something that I want to examine. So I'm going to pop back over to my research paper here. And I've reported what I looked for, but now I look at my results and say there was a total big range of cooking time. And there were different factors that affected cooking time. And there were differences in the, although the initial temperature of the eggs and the water were, there was differences in the eggs, but not the water, did longer or shorter make a difference? So I'm looking at this and I'm saying, here's my little scraps of what I'm going to want to analyze when I actually do my report. So flipping back over to my notes, I can, since I've got everything in a table, I can go ahead and, oh, by the way, I missed something here that I didn't extract from how to cook everything vegetarian. So I do need to go back to that source and make sure that if the initial egg temperature is not specified, I want to make a note, and the initial water temperature for immersion of the egg. So, so those are things I've got to go back in my notes and fix that. But for now, I'm certainly doing enough to, um, to get through my research here. But I want to go ahead and sort everything here. And I want to look at whether there are differences in really the real differences in the cool down method. So what I'm going to do in highlighting all my information, I'm going to select sort and filter and I'll select custom sort and say my data has header rows. And I want to look at the cool down method to see if there are differences in the cool down method and the time and if there's anything related to the total cooking time. So my values doesn't really matter, A to Z, Z to A. Let me just click on that and say, now my cool down method, kind of interesting. Cold water plunge, cold water plunge, ice water bath, ice water bath, run under cold water, sit in cooking water until cool. So one of the questions that I can ask myself in my research is, is there a difference in the cool down method and the total cooking time? So look at what happens here. When I look at the ice water bath section, for all of these, these were the recipes where the eggs were brought to a boil, the heat was turned off, and they sat in cold water, in hot water, for this length of time, and then jumped into an ice water bath. So this is a group of recipes that I can analyze collectively, and I can compare that to the eggs that were boiled on over medium heat, and plunged into cold water, the length of time in these recipes is longer. So that's something that I want to keep in mind as I'm going through. Now it's pretty clear to me I need to find more resources, but as I find resources I pretty much identified the variables that I want to gather information about so I can find more resources that meet my inclusion criteria and if I deviate from that I need to go back into my paper and I need to make sure that I report that here in my method section. My goal here is to come to some conclusion about the characteristics of these recipes. So if I look at 
what I have here in my spreadsheet, I, I don't really have anything definitive. So my guess is I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven recipes. If I work up to about, let's say 15 recipes, so I get another eight more, then I'll be able to start to understand whether there's any ideal characteristics that would increase the chances of coming up with a perfect hard boiled egg. But right now my range from nine minutes in the hot water to 20 minutes in the hot water, that's a little bit too wide to come to any conclusion. So once I've come to my conclusion and I know what I need to do here, I can uh, compare and contrast the recipes and cite them here in my results section. But ultimately, I'll come to my conclusion and I, one of the things that I want to discuss in the discussion of my paper is that there was quite a variety in the ingredients in the process. Uh, and I say ingredients because I still haven't found the recipes that boil in salt water or put oil in the water. So I got to keep that in mind. If I find them, great. If not, I have to let go of that. What the results of this research means and then if there are limitations. So my limitations of this research, uh, one or two sentences, always important to uh, disclose in a journal article for a paper for a class, that's something you want to think about whether your professor would want to see that. But certainly a limitation is that I'm only using English language recipes and right now I'm only using the cookbooks that I have in my kitchen. So uh, I might want to be more thorough and try and get more current cookbooks. Um, but what happens with all of this? So at the end of your paper, you've made your conclusions, you need to make a recommendation. And your recommendation, if the aim of this is to encourage somebody to go do the research and get a couple dozen eggs and experiment, that's one of the things that you can say, somebody needs to do that. But if the purpose of your research is to help home chefs everywhere figure out how to cook eggs, you want to help them apply this information to their work as a home chef. And so you don't want to call for them to do future research, but you want to make sure that you come out of this with a recommendation and that recommendation needs to be out of what you've seen. And so one of the things that you could consider based upon the variety we're seeing here in the recipes is we've got the initial egg temperature, initial water temperature, but one of the things that home chefs might want to think about is how long it takes the eggs to come to a boil. So those are things to keep in mind in terms of the application of your research. But for now, what we've done is we've gone through an example of how I lay out my outline for my research paper so that I can start filling in later, how I actually go about, so here in my methods, how I go about gathering my information, and how I prepare it for an analysis so that I can sort, whether you're working with index cards or you're working with a table, you want to make sure always, always, always that you take research notes because that's going to make your life easier. So happy researching everyone.